Cash is king and cash is crucial to any company. Mismanagement of the cash in and out flows will often lead to insolvency of the firm. Smaller companies often assume that liquidity management is for larger corporations. On the contrary, smaller firms usually default due to the lack of good cash flow management. Cash flow management is a key component. But can you measure it, manage it and report it? Also remember that when applying for financing, banks will ask for a cash flow statement. Bank credit officers also need to understand the liquidity management basics to check loan requests. So, plenty of reasons to dive into this subject. The principles are simple. Sources of cash are shareholder capital, commercial liabilities, and bank loans, as well as cash derived from net sales. Uses of cash are long-term investments in property, plants and equipment, investment and the net working capital requirement to finance the business cycle from production to sales. Managing the firm's cash in and out flows means that management must Understand the sources and users of cash. Forecast the amount and maturity of these cash flows on a short, medium, and long-term basis. Forecasting the cash flows means estimating what the company will receive and need to pay over time, tomorrow, in a week, a month or in one year. These estimated flows are projections and of course the reality may be different. To manage these variances companies, need to manage the associated risks and create financial buffers to cope with variances in cash flows. These reserves could be maintained in cash, credit facilities, the proceed of risk management hedges or shareholder equity. The company's business or operating cycle will transform cash through production and sales back into cash being the net profits resulting from sales. This cash cycle is the firm's blood circulation. Companies buy raw materials and supplies and use these in their production process. This is the cash outflow. Once the product or service is delivered a cash inflow is generated. The operational cycle needs to be financed through short-term liabilities. The measure of this financing need is calculated and referred to as working capital. Companies try to limit the working capital needs through Reduced reliance on external expensive bank loans, which they can achieve by having more finances offered by their commercial suppliers and other commercial liabilities. Also reducing the transformation cycle time will improve the operational efficiency, which increases the profits with less financing requirements. This can be achieved by turning raw material faster into finished products and selling them quicker without long client payment terms. Minimizing the fluctuations of the cash flow. This requires an understanding of the risks associated with the cash flows and managing these risks. The company also needs to maintain cash buffers to absorb cash flow fluctuations. A few simple ratios can help us to get a better grip on the company's liquidity. In the traditional definition of working capital, we can use the following formula. Working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities. Most analysts now should use the working capital requirement which deducts from the current assets all the liabilities excluding bank loans. This has the advantage of clearly indicating the amount required to be financed by bank loans. Good liquidity requires a positive working capital. But the working capital requirement should not exceed the borrowing capacity of the company. The cash flow cycle is the measure of turnover of each element of working capital. Days on hand for inventory is calculated as follows. Inventory days on hand is equal to the average inventory divided by the cost of goods sold times 365. This ratio produces the number of days of inventory. To get the average you can add last periods and this period's inventory and divide this by 2. We can take a similar approach for receivables. And the same approach can be used for accounts payable. These ratios allow you to measure the effectiveness of the liquidity management. They also come in handy for comparison with other companies that have different operational cycles. Cash buffer days are the number of days that a business can continue paying its typical outflows, without any cash coming in. So, how many laps can you do underwater without taking a breath? 
This number shows how resilient a company is in case of a crisis. The COVID pandemic is a good example. JP Morgan Chase collected data for small businesses in the United States. The median for cash buffer days is 27 days. The means that half of the small companies can hold their breath for less than 27 days. The number of days depends on the sector. This shows the essential concept of corporate segmentation. You must analyze apples with apples. Implications for credit scoring and for good management principles is also obvious. Now how do we predict our future cash position? We can do this with a simple Excel model. First, we determine the granularity of cash flow projection. Quarters, months, weeks, or even days. In our example, we go for months. Next, we list all our cash in flows and outflows at the time you expect them to occur. We do the same for our cash expenses. Cash in minus cash out is our monthly cash flow. Now, we did not start with a zero cash balance. At the beginning of month one we had 250 in cash. The cash flow for month one is 1400. This adds up to 1650, which is the cash level at the end of the month. The ending of month one, is the beginning of month two and so on. Now we look at our cash flow projection. We notice that the monthly cash flow is negative for two months. But the cash buffer absorbs these fluctuations. The orange line shows that our liquidity projection is fine. The cash buffer months are the number of months the company can survive without any new cash inflows. The calculation is simple. The cash at the end of the month divided by the cash outflow. Cash flow statements can be simple or complex. The logic behind stays the same. Remember that banks and other counterparties will also look at the cash flows. If not made available, the bank will try to reconstruct the cash flows from your financial reporting. Cash flows are also important in their estimation of your solvency and payback capacity. This video explained the essence and the importance of cash and liquidity management, which is essential for smaller firms. We showed some simple tools to manage liquidity and demonstrated how to construct a cash flow projection. Good luck and remember cash is king.